Welcome back Marauders. In this video we're going to uh, review combustion analysis for the AP test. So combustion analysis is when you have an unknown hydrocarbon, so something that contains carbon and hydrogen and sometimes another element like oxygen or nitrogen, uh, but you don't know the ratio between the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. So you're trying to figure out what's the mole ratio between carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in that compound. And so what we do is we burn it with oxygen. So we burn it with excess O2. And the products of the combustion reaction are going to be CO2 and H2O. And then by finding the mass of carbon dioxide and water that are produced, we can go back and figure out how much carbon was in the original hydrocarbon based on how much carbon dioxide was produced and how much hydrogen was in the original compound based on how much water is produced. And we can use that to figure out the mole ratio of our unknown compound. So in this example, uh, we're starting out with uh, 0.257 grams of CO2. So that's how much carbon dioxide was produced. We know that all the carbon in that carbon dioxide originally came from this hydrocarbon. And so we're going to multiply that by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, 44 grams of CO2 per mole. And in that mole of carbon dioxide, 12 grams are coming from carbon. And so that tells us that in our original reactant and then also in our product, we had 0 0.0701 grams of carbon. Uh, we'll also look at how much water was produced. So 0 0.0350 grams of H2O were produced. And so from that, we can figure out how much hydrogen was in our original compound because all the hydrogen that ended up here had to be here originally. So the molar mass of water is 18 grams of H2O per every mole. And of that mole of water, there's two atoms of hydrogen, each with a mass of one. So we had two grams of hydrogen. And so we multiply that and you get 0 0.003 nine grams of hydrogen. Uh, the next thing we need to do is figure out how much oxygen there was. So we're starting out with 0.105 gram sample total. So that's the total mass of this sample. And of that, 0 0.0701 grams were carbon, and this much was hydrogen. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract. So we're gonna take the total mass of the compound subtract the carbon, subtract the hydrogen, and that will tell us that there were 0 0.0309 grams of oxygen in that original compound. All right, well now we have the mass of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in this compound, uh, but that's not the ratio we're gonna use in that empirical formula. We need to change those all back into moles. So we're gonna change each one of these back into moles using their molar masses, so 12 grams of carbon per mole, uh, one gram of hydrogen per mole, and 16 grams of oxygen per mole of oxygen. And when we do that, we're getting 0 .05, 0, 0, 0.0058 moles of carbon and we're gonna get 0 0.0039 moles of hydrogen. And for the oxygen, we get 0 0.0019 moles of oxygen. All right, so now we have the moles of each. We just need to make this into a simple whole number ratio. And so in order to put that into a whole number ratio, the easiest way to do that is usually to divide them all by the smallest number. And so of these, the smallest number is this one with the oxygen, 0019. So that's one mole of oxygen, 0019. That gives us about two for the hydrogen. And divide by 0019, that gives us about three moles of carbon. So our ratio here, our formula for our hydrocarbon is C3H2O. 
Uh, and that's our empirical formula. That's the simplest whole number ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen in the compound. And so the next thing we need to do is figure out what is the molecular formula. So molecular formula is the actual number of atoms of each type in the molecule. And so to do that, I'm going to add up the mass of this empirical formula. So we'll do 3 times 12 for the carbons, plus 2 times 1 for the hydrogens, plus 16 for the oxygen. And when you do that, you get uh, 54. So 54 is the mass of just one of these um, one of these hydrocarbons, or one of these empirical formulas. And we're going to divide that by the uh, mass of the, uh, sorry, the, the molecular weight, or the molar mass of the whole compound. So 108 divided by 54, that gives us about 2. So it tells us that our molecular formula is 2 times bigger than our empirical formula. So all of these subscripts need to be doubled. So our molecular formula is C6H4O2.